Welcome to our worship this week. It's great to welcome you to St Gabriel's Worship from Home for this week in January. I'm so glad that you can join us from wherever you are across the community, across England and maybe even across the world. We are here to spend our time worshipping God, giving and dedicating our hearts to Jesus this week. As we come into our time of worship, in a moment we're going to light our candle. But if you engage with God in these next 30 or so minutes, please like, share or even invite others to watch along with you in worship and maybe even comment and join the discussion. You can donate to St Gabriel's Church by clicking on the link below to give to the work and ministry of our growing church. So wherever you are, welcome to our worship this week. We are still in Epiphany season, uh, so we still have uh, baby Jesus and the kings there waiting and watching for what's to come. This week we're going to be exploring Jesus calling some of his disciples. So as we come into our time of worship, we are going to light our candle here. It is our candle that we, rec we light to recognise that these next 30 or so minutes are going to be focused solely on God. And as we're in a lockdown, our days can seem as though they are blending into one. But we light this candle just to recognise these few moments as holy and peaceful to God. And now that we've done that, let us pray. Father God, we thank you for all that you have done in our lives this past week. We thank you for the inspiration of your Holy Spirit in all that we have done. And we thank you that Jesus is love. And Jesus is King in our lives. And we just pray now that your Holy Spirit will come upon us wherever we are, wherever we are worshipping. And it will reveal afresh your calling on our lives as we follow Jesus day by day. We pray this through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And we are going to sing our first song of praise now. So let us worship together through song.
what an inspirational worship song that was. And we are going to continue our time of worship by saying sorry to God for those things that we've done wrong. If you reopen up the first letter of John from uh, chapter 1 verses 5, you read this. This is the message we have heard from and proclaim to you that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him while we are walking in darkness, we lie and do not do what is true. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus his son cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, we, he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from our unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. So if we want to dwell in God's word today, let us take a moment to confess the sins that we have done that have separated us from the love of God. So we take a moment to sit quietly and confess privately those things that we've done this week. So together we say these words, Father, we have sinned against heaven and against you. We are not worthy to call be called your children. We turn to you again. Have mercy upon us. Bring us back to yourself as those who were once dead, but now have life through Christ our Lord. Amen. And we read again those words. If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive us and cleanse us from our unrighteousness. So may God forgive you and cleanse you from your unrighteousness and all that you have done this week. Amen. So we have had that moment of forgiveness and that start again in Christ. And we are going to continue by reading from our Bible, from the book of John. And we're going to be hearing about the calling of two of Jesus' disciples. And then we're going to take a look about what that means to us. So let's open up our Bibles again. This reading is from the book of John, chapter 1, verses 43 to 51. The next day, Jesus decided to leave for Galilee. Finding Philip, he said to him, Follow me. Philip, like Andrew and Peter, was from the town of Bethsaida. Philip found Nathanael and told him, We have found the one Moses wrote about in law, and about whom, prophet, whom the prophets also wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Nazareth, can anything good come from there? Nathanael asked. Come and see, said Philip. When Jesus saw Nathanael approach him, he said of him, Here truly is an Israelite, in whom there is no deceit. How do you know me? Nathanael asked. Jesus said, I saw you while you were still under the fig tree before Philip called you. Then Nathanael declared, Rabbi, you are the son of God, you are the king of Israel. Jesus said, You believe. Because I told you I saw you under the fig tree, you will see greater things than that. He then added, Very truly I tell you, you will see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. This is the word of the Lord. As we open up these scriptures, let us pray. Jesus, we learn about your life and about what it means for you to play a role in our lives, for us to give our whole hearts to you. So as we explore these scriptures, speak to us afresh, we pray. Amen. Daddy, Daddy, come and see. Daddy, Daddy, come and see this. 
or it would have been a tug on the arm. If you have spent any time around toddlers or preschools, schoolers, you probably would have heard the same expression. My daughter, when she was younger, and all toddlers and preschoolers, when they start to explore the world and see new things, they want to show you, they are so excited. Daddy, come and see, come and see this new revelation. For some of us though, especially the adults, we're like, it's a blade of grass, it's nothing new. And we lose that excitement and that joy of exploring the world afresh, the, the come and see moments. And it's quite rare now that we, we say those things, come and see. That new realisation, the new world that they want to explore and we want to show you. That new realisation and the new world is what Philip was inviting Nathaniel into. I found the person that Moses and the law and the prophets talk about. These are the most important parts of the Hebrew Bible, Moses and the prophets. And so Philip is saying to Nathaniel, I have found the one. I have found the Messiah. Come and see. Come and join in. John's followers knew, and if you read just a little bit earlier in the passage, you will have heard of John's followers recognising Jesus. And of course, last week we saw John recognising Jesus as the Messiah, the one whom the Spirit rested upon. And Nathaniel was being invited, come and see, come into a new world, come and be part of something fresh. Obviously, the passage is about Jesus calling two of his disciples, but like much of the scripture, there are so many layers to it. So many layers that we could spend all day delving deeper into the scriptures. And I don't think we, I or you have got the time to do that just now. So let's just pick up a couple of those things that we should reflect upon that speak to us about our lives today. Because like all scripture, it's challenging us now. Well, the first thing we need to explore is the idea of the fig tree that Nathaniel was sitting under. Jesus said to him, I saw you under the fig tree. Nathaniel had asked Jesus, how do you know me? Well, I saw you under the fig tree. Well, in the Bible, the fig tree was an important representation. In the Old Testament, the fig tree often stood as the symbol of the nation of Israel. It was also thought to be the tree of knowledge in the Garden of Eden, that the fig tree was there. And so it was an important part of scripture and Israel's history. And you can see that about the fig tree in Jeremiah and in Hosea, that it talks about Israel being the fig tree. But it was also a place where people sat and studied the scripture. It was the place where people would sit and be. It was a place where the prophets would rest and study and listen. And it was a place of learning and of peace. You would go and sit under the fig tree to learn and read and study the scriptures and to rest in that place. And so Nathaniel saw who Jesus really was at that moment. He could see that he was the Son of God, the King of Israel. The true meaning of these titles wouldn't clear, really be understood until Calvary, when the foreigner would say, this was truly the Son of God. And the title on the cross would read, the King of the Jews. The second thing we need to think about having looked and explored the idea of the fig tree and being sat under there, place of rest 
and reading. I don't know you, about you, but in this time of lockdown, where is your place of peace and rest? Where is your place that you go to study the scriptures on a daily basis? The second thing is the, the reading at the end. Very truly, Jesus said, I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. Does that image sound familiar to you at all? Does it strike a chord in your readings of the scripture? Well, it's a representation of Genesis 28, of Jacob having his dream, the one that we know as something called Jacob's Ladder. The time where God appeared to Jacob in a dream and, G and Jacob saw a ladder, ascending and, uh, a ladder ascending up to heaven and the angels ascending and descending. The point where heaven met earth. The dream was about the contact between God and his creatures on earth. The messengers, the angels, those who were carried out, who carried out God's will. And Jesus is saying that he is now that gateway to heaven. He is now the unique communicator between God and between, or between heaven and between earth, and between God and humankind. And Jesus is reminding the first listener, the readers of that moment in Israel's history and saying now this has been fulfilled, I am he. And so we have these layers of scripture that go deeper and there's so many more that we could explore as well that point towards the history of Israel, point towards Jesus as the Messiah, and pointing forward to what was to come and what is to come now and who Jesus really was and who Jesus really is. And both of them say and point to say that Jesus was the Messiah, the one that they were waiting for. And it was happening now. One got it straight away and went on the journey. And the other one took a little bit of time to come and see who Jesus was. And then we get challenged again. The main point, Jesus found Philip. And Philip found Nathaniel. And you know what? Jesus finds us. Wherever we are, whoever we are, in whatever we are doing, Jesus finds us like he finds the first disciples and calls us to come on the journey. We, like them, are invited to come and see what Jesus will do and is doing in our lives and in our communities. We are invited to come and see what Jesus is doing in the world and to be his hands and his feet, to go on the exciting journey to proclaim Christ and be his messengers here on earth. What journey is Jesus calling you on today to come and see and be part of? Are you on that journey with Christ? Are you being his hands and his feet? Are you having a fresh revelation of your faith this year? And there's the other great quote that we read in this scripture. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? You see, there is a little bit of rivalry between the towns and uh, between the areas. Just like 
a little bit of rivalry between, say, Liverpool and Manchester or Merseyside and Manchester or other parts of the country where you might say, has anything good come out of those places? But actually, that challenges us because Nathaniel was saying, well, why should I come and see? Can anything good come out of that town or of that person? And it asks us about our prejudices. Do we stop other people coming into our lives? Do we stop hearing from other people because we're prejudiced against them? Because of the way they look, because of the area they live, the way they treat others, the way they dress, or the needs that they have? Are we stopped from having fresh revelations of the scripture? Are we stopped from going on the journey with Jesus because of the prejudices we have? Do we not enter into the journey because the person inviting us could never be someone who could speak into our lives? Are you being stopped coming and seeing Jesus because of the person speaking and inviting you? As an individual, I love being called on the journey of Christ to come and see. My journey has been amazing, but also hard and difficult. Because that's what we're called into as we come on a journey with Christ. It's not all brilliant and joyous. It's a struggle and hard. Good things happen. Hard things happen. Difficult things happen. We face medical issues. We face poverty. We get annoyed because of what we see in the world. We have a righteous anger because we see things in ways that others don't because of our journey with Christ. And I love being on that journey. I love being annoyed and frustrated like at the moment I am because of the daily death tolls and the coronavirus rates. And I'm frustrated by seeing the government being called on by a footballer because they're not feeding the hungry and we have to step in and be Jesus' hands and feet. And I get frustrated by those things, but that's a righteous frustration that we as a Christian and I as a Christian are called to come and see and see the wrongs in the world and try and do a little bit to counteract that. But I also like being invited on the journey Christ has called us as a church, as a St. Gabriel's. The journey that we never thought we would be on or the place we never expected to be when Jesus said, come and see. When he invited others into our church and said, come and see. And we are in a church that is so diverse, that is so different with different theological perspectives from different countries, from different places that enjoys us to be a place of Christ in our community. To come and see. And a place where we didn't think we would be even a year ago. And where next year we don't know where Jesus is inviting us as a church to be or look like. But it's exciting to be part of that. So are you going to come and see through the difficulties, through the strains of your own life? Are you going to walk faithfully with Christ? Are you going to come and see with our church, in our community and in our world what it means to be called by Christ in this place, to be a part of this church? Are you going to join us as we are faithful to the scriptures and to the Holy Spirit and in prayer? Are you going to join Christ 
and our journey with him as a church and as an individual to come and see what that might look like today and this year. Nathaniel was sceptical but allowed him to self to be brought to Jesus and he asks the question how do you know me? He asks the question of Jesus how do you know me? And we get to ask that same question Jesus how do you know me? Why do you want to know me? The sinner who I am the person who is broken, is bruised, who is frustrated, who is tired because of this lockdown, who is lonely, who is a sinner, who is a sad, and or who is sad because of all that's going on, who doesn't think they can give just a little bit more because actually I'm broken and I'm bruised because of my friendships, my relationships, because of my health. And Jesus says, I know you and I love you and you matter to me and you offer something to me because you are of worth. Do you ask, how do you know me? Why do you know me and why do you want to know me? To Jesus. Jesus found me in a place where I didn't think he would ever find me in my life. Jesus found Philip and Nathaniel and Philip found Nathaniel and Jesus finds us and invites us on that journey to come and see. And we are invited on that journey as Christians to come and see what Christ is going to do in our church and in our world this year. And we are invited to be part of that. We are invited to go deeper into our faith. We are invited to open up the scriptures, maybe for a first time, but to a new. We are invited to speak God's truth and Christ in our world. We are being called. We are being summoned by Christ. We are being called and summoned in different ways to come and see what Jesus is doing. And we are invited, like Philip did, to call others on to that journey. But as a disciple, as someone who is on that journey, we are called to do something more. We are called to give our whole lives, whatever that might look like for you at this time. We are called to come and see and journey with Christ in our worship, in our daily lives. So, what is it that you need to do today to be faithful to that journey with Christ? Let us pray. Christ, you call us to come and see and be on a journey with you. And we are sorry at those moments where we have ignored you. Where we have not seen what you have wanted to say to us because of the prejudices that we have and the people that have been saying those things. And we ask us to reveal the scripture afresh again to us so that we may know who you are, may speak your word to others and that we can come and see what you will do in our lives and in our church's lives this year. Amen. So we have reflected and heard from the Bible and been called out 
and been asked to go deeper with Christ. And what we're going to do now is proclaim that faith that we have in Christ, the, the faith that uh, the disciples followed Jesus for, the faith that they proclaimed. And we're going to um, use the book of Philippians to declare our faith. So we say these words and the words will come next to me. Though he was divine, he did not cling to equality with God, but made himself nothing. Taking the form of a slave, he was born in human likeness. He humbled himself and was obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore God raised him on high and gave him the name above every other name, that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. And we're going to proclaim that faith again uh, by singing our next song of praise. So let us sing together. again and we're going to turn to prayer and Liz is going to lead us in our prayers this morning so let us pray together Jesus you tell us in your word that you are the light of the world 
We cry out to you for our world in chaos, in darkness. It's hard not for our hearts to be heavy when we hear the news. So heartbreaking to see so much suffering and distress. So together we come before you now in this time of prayer and cry out to you for hope, guidance and healing for you to shine your light in the chaos. We commit to you all those who are ill with the virus, for those who have just been diagnosed and are fearful and anxious, for those in hospital and fighting for each breath. We commit to you our NHS staff. We give you thanks for them and ask that you pour out your blessing on them. Grant them your strength and courage to face each day. We commit our care workers, our teachers, all key workers, police officers. We pray for those who are mourning, for those who are shielding and isolated those who are lonely and those struggling with mental health issues, for those furloughed and those with uncertain job situations, those in financial difficulties and poverty, for those vulnerable families and children. Lord, the list goes on, so many needs we look to you for provision and for healing. Please give wisdom to those who are leading and guiding us through, for the scientists and politicians and for those responsible for directing the vaccination process. Guide them in all their decisions. Father we pray for the United States and ask for you to shine your light there. Please restore justice, order and peace there and heal the divisions that, ex that has created so much anger and tension. Lord, we commit ourselves to you. Open our hearts and minds to you. May we know your presence, your strength, your patience, courage, resilience and your peace. Help us to be attentive to your voice and willing to shine your light and to show your love in this needy world. Father, we pray these prayers in Jesus' name. Amen. And we bring our prayers to an end by saying the words that Jesus taught us. The Lord's Prayer and we say our Father in heaven hallowed be your name your kingdom come your will be done here on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for yours is the kingdom the power and the glory now and forever Amen Amen well, in a moment, we're going to sing our final hymn of praise. But before we do that, remember to join us at our children's groups at home, where we are exploring different themes through and the Bible in different ways. And don't forget, you can join us next week in worship from home, and you can donate to St. Gabriel's in any way financially that you can. So as we come to an end, I pray whatever this week looks like for you, that God may bless you, that he may walk with you, that you will know the blessing of God the Father, Jesus the Son, and the Holy Spirit now and always. Amen. So go into this week renewed from this worship to do and walk with Christ. And as we go, let us sing our praises to Christ now. And can a 
So.